past 11 o'clock, and as promised, I have my special guest here in the studio, and he is the one and only Mr. Bobby Mackey. Good morning, Bobby. Good morning, Tom. How are you? Good, good. You look great. Well, thank you very much. You do. You look, you look absolutely I'm good. Enough. Yeah, well, I guess so. <laughs> three months off or three and a half months? You know, it, it feels weird not to worry about what day it is or care. <laughs> Care. But the, but, the, uh, but the corona vacation is about over. Yes, it is. And I'm certainly glad of that for you and for the club. And, and, uh, but I'm, I'm, I'm really glad that you were available to come in this morning and talk yeah, to me yeah. about reopening the club this coming weekend. Yeah. I know um, uh, RJ back here, uh, he uh, had me come over last uh, Friday. And we shot. Yeah, I saw that. I saw that. Did you see that? Yeah. 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 Okay. How, much, how long did you laugh? <laughs> uh, well, 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 I didn't. I couldn't tell if you was pointing your finger in the face of them, uh, the highway guys trying to clean that uh, mudslide up. Would, would you point your finger out? Ah, uh, yeah. We we had a, a very interesting conversation <laughs> with them. They were very very nice, yeah. very cordial, very cooperative. But they only work five hours a day. Yeah. Well. <laughs> So a hundred dollars an hour. That's five hours. That's five hundred bucks. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you probably only work one hour. <laughs> you have the time to go to lunch. But uh, yeah, everything, everything's good. The the, uh, the Corona vacation was almost over, and then the mudslide vacation took over. <laughs> mudslide. But yeah. they just got it cleared just a couple days ago. Yeah, Friday. Friday. And we're you know. Yeah. We didn't well. We didn't have time to to get it together to go ahead and get open, but we're going to be ready this weekend. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's absolutely great. It's going to be a great weekend. I think it will. You know, the July Fourth weekend never was any good. Everybody usually out shooting off fireworks and stuff. This might be a little different since uh, people have been able to come to the club for like 15, we went all fifteen weeks. Fifteen weekends. And and I think the guys have had enough vote too. I think the band's had enough. <laughs> well, I, I I would definitely think so. They're probably biting at the bit like you are to get back up there and play some music yeah, for folks. Yeah. <clears throat> you know, that's one of the one of the most unique things to me about the club is the fact that you have not only an incredible following, but you have an incredible band oh, to yeah. put that show on yeah. every weekend. And it's longevity is what uh, what. That's right. What it is. What, Chuck Rich had been there 29 years with me, I think. I believe 29 years. Willie Brown about 27, 28. Or certainly Vaughn. He been with you since the beginning, was it? Yeah, 50. Over 50 years, Ernie Vaughn been, been with me. Wow. Before I started playing clubs or anything, Ernie and I were playing some music together. Yeah. See, that's, that's what's really cool. And that just goes to show what type of entertainer you are. Yeah, well, I, I meant business when I left when I left Lewis County, Kentucky, Concord, when I left there and, uh, and out of high school, and I come down here and got a job on the railroad and it got me a little closer to where there was some nightlife and places you could play music, you know. Yeah. And uh, worked on the railroad. For, then I got laid off on the railroad and got into music full time in 1970. Yeah, right. and, and that's when I figured that my professional career began, although a couple of years before that, but that's when I started at the Apple in, in the fall of 1970 with Red Jenkins and the Country Lads. Right. At the Apple. That's when I figured that, you know, my professional uh, career, music career began, that, yeah. and, and it marks 50 years ago this year. Wow. That's, that, that's awesome. That's just awesome. I played other clubs. <clears throat> I played other clubs for eight years. And uh, Boulevard. Uh, yeah, I left it. I was at the Bullo at the Apple for a couple of years. Went to Boulevard for four and a half years, and went to Julie's for a year and a half. Yeah. Uh, Did you go out to Julie's after Cheyenne left or before Cheyenne left? Before. Before Cheyenne. I was there and left. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Cheyenne. They went in there right behind me. But, uh, but, you know, at that point, 
after leaving Julie's, I was I was torn between I was going to either move to Nashville or get my own club, and uh, and I opted for I felt more security because every club I played, I was people following me from one to another. Sure. But from leaving Julie's in Sharonville and coming all the way over here to Wilder, Kentucky, it was you know it was a little risky, but but it you know it took right off from the beginning. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I don't know if we've ever discussed this before, and I hate to get repetitious on things with you because, I mean, we do have the audience, you know, changes every every week, you know, being on the radio. Some weeks people are listening, some weeks they're not. Yeah. But um, if you don't mind, quickly, um, tell us how the um, purchase of uh, the old Latin Quarter came about. Well, it's sitting there. <laughs> it was sitting there, <laughs> gathering dust, and mold and stuff. <laughs> so, uh, there it is, right? I well, love dust. <laughs> Norman Stamper, Norman and Gene Stamper, great friends, yes. have been friends yes. all this time. They they were coming over to Boulevard and Julie's. They'd come over there on Saturday nights. We got to be friends, and they, and they had a furniture store on Mama Street in Newport, modeled, okay. modeled on furniture. Okay. Arnold Powell ran it. He was their partner. They were kind of silent partners, but they had the place, or they, you know, they were owners. And uh, and they kept telling me, "You need to get a place over in Northern Kentucky. There ain't nothing over there. You need to get a." You know, I listened to it, and, but one day it got serious. Norman called me. Norman called me, and he said, "What are you, buddy? What are you doing?" I said. He said, can you meet me down here in Wilder at uh, about 1 o'clock today? Can you meet me down there? And uh, he had me meet him at the Light Cafe, which was there next door to it. Of course, I bought it after that and tore it down and made a parking lot out of it. Okay. Had a parking lot to the I did, not, I did not know there was something. Yeah, there was there. a beautiful building there. It was solid as a rock. It, it took... <laughs> it, it took some bulldozers to tear it out, too. <laughs> but uh, that's, I go down there and, and a lady by the name of Beulah, do you know Beulah? I do know. Uh, the, the lady that brings a cake every year. Oh, yes. yes you okay. know Beulah. Okay, I know, yes. Right, RJ? That, that's, that's Beulah, the cake lady. Yeah. She, cake lady. she always, every year for my birthday and, and for the anniversary because she, had the key in her hand when I met her, met Norman down there. She had the key that unlocked the door that led us into the old Latin Quarter. Okay. And showed it to me the first time I saw it. And uh, so that's that's how it happened. I kind of just got drawn to it. And that made up my mind that day that I was going to get that club. And I could, by having my own club, I could, if I needed to go to Nashville from time to time, I could go whenever I wanted to. Sure, sure. And I did spend a lot of time down there during the week in the early days. And I was going back and forth from Nashville to yeah. Danny, Danny Bailey and I. Uh, Danny's got a big studio down in Columbia, Kentucky, where I record now. Right, right. And uh, I met Danny in Nashville, and we got together. He was from from Columbia, Kentucky. I met him down there. Red brick studio, beautiful studio. That's where I record. Where the studio is, it's on like what they call public square. Where you, if you go into town, to the right, you go around the courthouse on the way in, and on the way back out, you you go around the right. You go around the right on that other side. You know, you've seen those old, right, old, right. Those old beautiful towns, old. Oh, I love them. I love those. They town. got a personality unlike anywhere else. Yeah. Of course, you know that one day there was horse and buggy going up. Right. right. Horse and buggies going yeah. up through there. Yeah.